Hello, welcome back to the Explore YouTube channel. Today we are going to continue with the uh, Python MCQ series. So again, we are going to get our hands dirty with these questions. Let's get started. So I can see that, okay, there's this list one here uh, having values five, six, seven, and eight. Now there's this interesting for loop here. We kind of uh, loop in the list in this way, right? So for i in range, whatever the length of the list is, suppose it's n, and then we go about doing some operations here. We go about doing some operations. But up here, we are using enumerate, which is kind of interesting. Let's see. So for value comma index in enumerate list one, print value. So what will be the answer? What will be the actually the output here? That's the question. So in this case, if you go for uh, basically output five, six, seven, and eight, well, you are completely wrong. In enumerate, it's true that you can loop simultaneously in the values and the index as well. Okay. But up here, the orientation is kind of shifted. The orientation is kind of shifted by one place. What is the orientation? What is the or original orientation of any minute? Don't, can, go, don't get confused by the variable name here. Always remember the orientation. So the orientation goes like this. Let me just write it for you. So the orientation goes like this. For whatever the index is, comma value in enumerate and whatever my list container is, suppose list one list one and therefore i'll be able to print whatever my index value is and the element inside of the list suppose value but up here this is reversed very important see this is the original orientation index is going to give me indexing like 0 1 2 and 3 but up here value is going to give me what 5 6 7 and 8 up here you can see that it's reversed so this value is not going to give me 5 6 7 and 8 it's going to give me nothing but 0, 1, 2, and 3, which is nothing but the index here, right? And this index is in turn going to give me the value 5, 6, 7, and 8. This is going to be found out from the index. So this is something you have to take care of. So what I can say with respect to this um, sort, of, sort, of, sort of like the answer here. So my answer will be nothing but 0, 1, 2, and 3. That's it. That's what my output should be. All the indices will be there. Don't get confused, okay? Just remember the orientation. The orientation is very important. Okay, let's continue. Now here we can see that, okay, there's this dictionary D. Uh, it has a so sort of dictionary is nothing but having a key and value pair. I hope you know about it. So up here, five is the key, 25 is the value, and then this continues, so on. Okay, now it said print D of six, print D of six. So right now, what will be the output? So up here, the output will be nothing but, I'll be getting an error, no output will be there. I'll be getting an error. More appropriately, this will be now known as a key error. And this will be again there in the option. One of those four or five options, there will be this option key error. Okay. Key error, what does it say? That okay, in the dictionary, I can see that there is no such key named as six. Therefore, I'll be getting a key error. Key error. That's it. Now it said that okay, print d dot get six. You might be like, okay, what is dot get here? Dot get. So dot get is again going to help me uh, retrieve the value from that particular key in the dictionary so what i'm providing is six so again will it give me a key error because six is not existing no up here this is going to give me none by default it's going to give me none by default why see this is the beauty of dot get see this is also a way of retrieving d of six is also a way of retrieving but again this is going to give me a key error so what if i am not sure about uh, whether a key is present in a dictionary then what is the best way to retrieve that uh, value i'll be using this one and not this one because this may or may not throw me an error but this one is never going to throw me an error right if the uh, key is present if i just write d dot get 5 then it's going to give me 25 because it's there but if i write d dot get 6 since 6 is not there in the dictionary it's going to give me a none value by default very important okay that's it now here i'm seeing that okay print d dot get dot get is again used 7 comma 51 why is there another argument here and what is this argument again up here don't be confused 7 is nothing but the key and 51 is nothing but the specified value specified value what does this say it says that okay see d dot get 7 comma whatever this 51 is right so it says that okay if the 7 key is present in the dictionary then give me its value Else, if it's not present, then give me the value 51. So what if I, from this, from this, what will be the output? The output will be 49 because 7 is already present. What if I write d.get 
6 comma 55 then what will be the output this will be nothing but 55 because 6 is not present then it's going to give me 55 right if i don't provide any value here by default this is nothing but dot get is nothing but none i mean dot get 6 is going to give me none i hope that makes sense again these are very few important concepts which you have to remember along okay okay let's move forward we have a capital s which is nothing but initialized to a string here a b c d very small string i have taken okay now it said print ord s of 1 print ord s of 1 what is s of 1 by the way so 0 1 2 3 at 1 i can see b is there small b not capital b small b is there so this is this can be converted to suppose ord of small b that's it so what does ord does so ord is nothing but going to help me uh, convert whatever the character is so ord is going to help me convert the character to the corresponding ascii value to the corresponding ascii value now what is an ascii value what is an ascii value so ascii kind of uh, basically the full form is i believe so american standard code for information for information interchange enter change that's it so the ascii full form is american standard code for information interchange and basically it's a generalized value which may which me uh, we may use okay so ord of b is going to give me nothing but let me let me tell you the ranges here first okay let me tell you the ranges here first okay let me just go down a little bit cool so what i'll do is my small a kind of starts from nothing but 97 and goes till and go this goes on till i reach small z which is at 122 okay my capital a starts from 65 and this goes on until i reach capital capital z which is ending at 90 this is what the ascii value range is so if i ask what is b ord of b what is ord of b what is ord of b so ord of b will be nothing but 98 at 98 b will be there small b that's it so up here what i can say is happily that okay chr not this one so ord of s of 1 ord of b is going to give me 98 that's it now again up here i can see that print ord of s of 1 which is nothing but b dot upper so what is this dot upper function doing this is very important function so what is this function doing let's see so this is going to get converted to ord of small b was there and there's this functionality dot upper let's convert this again so this will be nothing but ord of dot upper is going to convert whatever the uh, character is into uppercase so small b so now this will be capital b now i can see that capital a is at 65 right capital a is 65 so at 66 capital b will be there so i can say that ord of 66 is going to be nothing but uh, so, sorry ord of b is going to be nothing but 66 okay that's it that's pretty much it and that's something i can see from here as well okay cool let's move forward uh, we have print chr of 70 now you might be like okay what does chr does again or the ord function what does the ord function does it kind of converts uh, the character to the corresponding ascii value but the chr function converts the ascii value to, re to the corresponding character that's pretty much it so you can say that their job is vice versa okay so as of now chr of 70 what will it be so i know for a fact i know for a fact 65 at 65 capital a is there 66 67 68 69 and then 70 so b c d e and f so can i not say that chr of 70 will be nothing but capital f that's it and again um, the uh, apostrophes won't be there okay i hope that makes sense so print chr 70 capital f that's it print chr 120 what will it be again i have to kind of remember the ranges here it's quite important i can see small z is at 122 so let's write small x small y small z so i can see small z is at 122 so y must be at 121 x must be at 120 so i can say that this will give me nothing but small x so print chr 120 is going to give me small x that's it okay these are few of these string operations which you have to be taking care of okay or general operations okay let's move forward uh let me get rid of this entire stuff here okay cool so we have this list here 566 six. okay notice 6 is repeating here and 5 is once s is nothing but a set of l1 so again this is going to be get, getting converted to so s is going to be nothing but 5 and 6 itself 
Now it said for i in range length of s, which is nothing but two here, right? My s is up here five and six. So length of s is two. So print s of i. So what will be the output? Well, the output will be five and six. And if you go for this output, you are very much wrong. You are very much wrong. Why? See in set in Python, you cannot just loop in the set. You cannot simply just loop in the set. There is no way you can loop because set does not supports indexing. Okay. So what I can say is that okay, this is going to this entire line here these entire line here this one and this one is going to give me an error okay so what is the appropriate way to loop in the set again this one is the appropriate way appropriate way so for element in set so i've just written e l e l e element so for element in set print element so it's going to simply print five and six that's it okay five and six that's it okay great let's move forward we have a list here i can see l2 is 10 11 and 12 now it's saying for a comma b in zip l1 comma l2. Now what does this zip functionality do? And why is it taking two arguments? Right, right. Why is it taking two arguments? Zip l1 and l2. So what is my l1? L1 value is nothing but five six six. Let me just write that. L2 value is nothing but I believe so. Ten eleven and twelve. Ten eleven and twelve. So zip functionality says that okay. I'll kind of pair up all of those corresponding elements at the corresponding index. What do I mean by that? Let's see. So let me just write the indexes as well. 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. So if I do a zip of L1 and L2, then this is internally getting converted in this way. 5 and 10. 5 and 10. It will be paired up. 6 and 11 will be paired up. And at the end, we have 6 and 12, which will be paired up. That's it. Now it said that I'm looping in this way for a comma b. So a will be uh, pointing to this one and b will be pointing to this one. So if I print, then this is going to give me nothing but 5, 10. In the next line, it's going to give me 6, 11. In the next line, it's going to give me 6, 12. You can see the corresponding numbers are printed 5, 10, 6, 11, 6, 12. In that way, it's going to get printed. Now let's try to, uh, let's try to see another uh, variation of this. L3 is here. So L3 is here. Initialize with value 10 and 11. I'm saying for a comma b in zip l1 and l3. Will this be an error? Again, I'm performing zip here. Will this be an error? Why am I saying this will be an error? L1 is nothing but 566. And I can see L3 is nothing but 10 and 11. So I am kind of running out of indexes, right? I mean, this is 0, 1, and 2, 0, 1. So I see that, okay, if I perform a zip function, functionality, by the way, of L1 and L3, if I'm not wrong, then this should probably give me nothing but 5, 10. So this should be 5 and 10. Then we will be having 6 and 11, right? Now, will there be an error here? Because I can see that I have nothing to pair up 6 with. Or will it be something like 6 and none? Will it be something like that? No. This will simply be ignored. This will simply be ignored. And this will be simply it. Zip of 5, 10 and 6, 11. So if I print, if I go about printing A and B, then the answer will be nothing but 5 will be paired up with 10. So 5 and 10 will be at the very first step. Then I see that, okay, we have 6 here. Then this will be print, uh, paired up with 11. Not printed, but paired up with 11. So 6 and 11 will be there. That's it. This is what my output will be. So it's, is it not fair enough to say that the zip functionality will work on basically the smallest list of them? the smallest length of the list of them, right? So as of now, what was the smallest? L3, right? So I can see that the zip is also going to be containing at most two elements or at least like two elements, right? Or at most, you may figure it out. Okay, let's see with the last one. So for value, so we have something like for value in L1, print value, and then L1 is initialized to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, okay? So as of now, L1 is 5, 6, 6. So as of now, my L1 was nothing but 5, 6, and 6. Now for value in L1, so I'm just kind of going to loop here and get these values, 5, 6, 6, 6. But again, I'm seeing print value. So 5 gets printed. Now my L1 is getting initialized to new list. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Will this be an error? That's the question. Because see, 5 will be printed. In the next line, 6 was supposed to be printed. But again, L1 is initialized to some another list. So I'm, I am changing, I am dynamically changing list 1 here. While looping, I'm dynamically changing this one. Will this be an error? No, the answer is no. What will be the output then? Will the output be something like uh, 5 will be there and then the list has been changed. So it will be 1, 2, 3, 4 and then till 7. No, again, this won't be the output. The output will simply be whatever the original contents were. 5 uh, in the next line, 6 and 6. 
Why? See, internally, this is what's happening. Okay, internally, this is what's happening. So, this is getting converted in this way for value in whatever list one is. So, list one is suppose 5, 6, and 6, and this is kind of getting stored here. So, this is not going to change. This is not going to change at all. Now, I'm just saying that, okay, print value, print value. So, as of now, 5, 6, and 6 will be printed despite list one is changing to whatever the value is. Suppose 56, 66, and then so on. I don't care. Despite the list one is getting changed, I don't care about it. It has been stored properly here. So it's going to give me five, six, and six. That's it. So I hope the uh, explanation was quite clear enough. If you found the video helpful, please make sure to like the video and do subscribe the channel as well. Thank you.